Jessica! Jessica, come on. come on. I'm super pumped that I get to do your um, your 90, I mean, not your 90 days. Lord, I went to that to you, your graduation. <laughs> and I want you to bear with me for a minute because I want to just take you through a little trek that happened to me this week. And the Lord, when I could have slept in this morning, he woke me up early and he said, I need you to share this with her. But uh, as most of y'all know, Tammy and I and Joanne and Rachel went to the movies. I think it was Friday night. And so as we came out of the movie theater, I think it was around 9.30ish, and the lightning was just unbelievable. And I kept saying, this looks like tornado lightning. This doesn't look like, I wasn't scared at all, uh, which if you would have known me three or four years ago, I was deathly afraid of bad weather. If a cloud looked like it was coming over, I would immediately seek the strongest shelter I could possibly find and hide where I could even see the outside. Like that is just how petrified I was. There would be times I would almost pass out and faint. I was so scared and worked myself up over bad weather. And so as we're driving, and I'm just looking at the lightning, I know there's something different about this lightning. Like I know it, but I'm not scared. And so I'm we're talking about it and we're talking about, we'll look on the radar and of course we're not seeing anything. So as we drive on back home, I drop Tammy and all them off and I head to my house. And when I walk in my house, my dog greets me, Samson, but not with his normal, hey grandma, I love you grandma. Samson was shaking Samson was freaking out. There was something very different about his greeting. But I just kind of thought, well, he's just being crazy. Samson was wrong, and he just, you know, it was just, there was something really wrong. So I go on over to the computer. I check my email, and I'm just going on. I hear the thunder clouds come, and I hear the, the storms go, and I'm just thinking about what a great night's sleep I'm going to have that night with the rain hitting the roof. So I get up from my chair to make my way to my bed, and as I pass my sliding glass door, I turn my head because something catches my eye outside the sliding glass door, and this is what I see. That's what I see. I see the trampoline that was way in the field all of a sudden is now on my porch. And that might, might as well have been a man standing there with a loaded gun ready to kill me. Because when I saw that, I was gripped with fear. And I began to adjust and adapt to the fear. I called Mandy. I called whoever I could because I was at home alone. I began to just get scared. I talked to them through the phone, looking at each other. Uh, wondering was more bad weather coming at that point. Now I'm getting a little bit more scared. And so then we say our goodnights and I get in the, I get in my bed and I'm trying to calm myself down, trying to talk to myself, okay, you have, you have not had, you have not been scared of bad weather. You're good. You're okay. And for every clap of thunder that would come, my heart rate would shoot up. My blood pressure got so high at one point, I could not even hear the thunder because of the pulsating in my ear. And so at one point I got up and I thought, I'm just going to go sleep at the big house. And so I got up, but when I got up, I said, no, I'm not going to do it. So I got back in the bed and I laid there for about 30 minutes until the next clap of thunder and lightning came. And I got up again and I said, okay, I'm just going to go on and sleep at the big house. That way I can get a night's sleep. And then I was like, no, I'm going to go back to bed. So I go back to bed. On the third time, it was a huge clap of thunder. It sounded like a huge gust of wind was coming. And it was like one o'clock in the morning. And I said, okay, I'm going to the big house. So I get up and I am shaking profusely and I can feel myself literally getting ready to pass out. I can tell the whole, just, just like old times, I can feel all of it coming on my adrenaline. I'm, I'm shaking. I can't even put my clothes on correctly. Uh, I'm just trying to get it done as fast as I can. And a still small voice comes and says, Susan, Susan, I got you. Because if you go over there, all that's going to come back on you. I need you to trust me. Get in the bed. It's going to be okay, but don't do what you're about to go do. Because that's what you used to do. 
and I'm, I'm trying to take you a different way. And so because I know my father's voice, I said, okay, shaking still, and got in the bed, and I fell asleep. And the next morning I woke up and I saw the same picture. This was the very next morning, and I took a picture of it. Because this time, instead of looking at it with fear, I looked at it and said, that was his hand of protection. Because that could have gone right through. I could have been at home. My children could have been at home. The whole building could have been completely destroyed. All of our property could have been completely destroyed. But it stopped. He took his finger and he said, not any further. And at that point, he said, I need you to live by faith and not by fear. And so it reminded me of this, and it says, it's in James, Tammy's favorite. It says, when God, when tempted, no one should say, God is tempting me. Because we're tempted for bad things, good things, a lot of things. I was tempted to do my old thing, which was go and hide. When tempted, no one is, is, should say, God is tempting me. For God cannot be tempted by evil, nor, God, nor does God tempt anyone. But each person who is tempted, when they are dragged away by their own evil desires and enticed, then after the desire it has conceived, it gives birth to sin, and to sin, when it is full grown, gives birth to death. Do not be deceived, my dear sister. Every good and perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of heavenly lights, who does not change like the shifting shadows. He chose to give us birth through the word of truth, that we might be a kind of first fruits in all he created. And so as I read that that morning, the Lord showed me, he said, Susan, I gave birth to you. I created you. I formed you in your mother's wombs. I knew the plans I had for you. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you a future and plans to give you a hope. And my prayer for you, because we've talked all the time that drugs were not your problem, relationships were. That when you get out there and those winds start howling, and the thunder starts rolling, and that blue-eyed, blue jean walks around the corner. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Y'all acting like y'all don't know. Don't do it. You give God your first fruits. You hold out for a hero. You be still and know that he is God. And he's going to take you to a whole nother level. But I'm so honored. I'm so honored to call you my friend as you graduate here. I'm so honored to, to just have been in, uh, in your presence the whole time you're here. The staff feels the same way. You definitely finish strong. And I cannot wait uh, for your family to get you home and really see what's going on. But I'm so proud of you. And here is your graduation certificate. I love you. Thank you. So many people. Um, I didn't, I didn't prepare anything. The Lord just wouldn't let me. Um, you know, I, so I took that as a sign. I just needed to get up here and say what he wants me to say. Um, he made me a promise when I first got here six months ago. It comes out of Ezekiel. For I will take you out of the nations. I will gather you from all the countries and bring you back into your own land. I will sprinkle clean water on you and you will be clean. I will cleanse you from all your impurities and from all your idols. I will give you a new heart and put a new spirit in you. I will remove from you your heart of stone and give you a heart of flesh. And I will put my spirit in you and move you to follow my decrees and be careful to keep my laws. I got that promise from God very early on in this. And he's fulfilled every bit of it. Um, you know, I... I was a mess when I got here. Um, my trust was taken from me so early in life, and everyone I met after that paid for it. Everyone. From my family, who's done nothing. Thank y'all so much. It's, you know, everybody kept coming up to me yesterday asking me if I was nervous about leaving. And I'm, I'm not, and that just amazes me. I have this peace. 
that I, I still don't yet understand. Um, but I know it comes from knowing that I'm not the same person I was when I walked through that door. I don't react the same. I don't think the same. Um, you know, I don't, everything is just, everything has changed. My heart, you know, I have compassion for people that I never thought I would find, ever. When you girls hurt, I hurt. And for you girls that are just coming in, I'm so glad to have seen the progress that y'all have made already. Because even if, even if y'all don't see it, it's there. It's there. And just remember that when this gets hard, and it will, because this is the hardest thing I have ever done in my life. But when it gets hard, it's working. When it hurts, you're growing. Please remember that. And don't give up because it's really easy to do that. It's really easy to give up. We've done it our whole life. We don't have to do that anymore. Because greater is he that is in us than he that's in the world. And Miss Susan, <laughs> I will never be able to thank you enough. That day in Picayune when you held my hands and looked me in the eyes and begged me to trust you, you broke walls that, that I can't even begin to tell you. Everything changed for me from that point. And I know it was God working through you. And I will never be able to thank you enough for that. And I love y'all.